Have you ever wondered why? When? How much? What if? Well, you're in luck, because you're listening to the Hypotheticast. Three best buds. On a mission. To ask all the questions. And get all the answers. Pathetic ass. Hi. Oh, hello. Hi. Wow. We made it. We did. This is a weird recording session because I am in my house. I'm in my and house. And you guys are in your house. Oh, yeah, true. We're in together. separate rooms. Separate rooms of our house. Uh, we're doing that because the world is going through a weird thing right now. And it's sure uh, it's called COVID-19. And so we're all hiding in our houses being good little citizens. It's been a weird... Yeah, it, well, it feels like months. It but really it does feel like months. A few weeks. I, yep. can I, okay, can I share what happened earlier today? Yes, yeah. please. <laughs> I found a strange picture of Pete Buttigieg. Uh, like just in, <laughs> in, in, in like the toy aisle That's of a Target. That's, like he I'm was good. just in the toy aisle of a Target. And I thought it was really funny. So I shared it in our hypothetic ass group <laughs> chat. And I was like, remember this guy? And Emily literally didn't remember who he was. Like literally this it's month true. he was running for it's president. And, I, and she was like, he looks familiar. Was he on Tiger King? And I, we were like, no, it's Pete Buttigieg. He the guy dropped who out ran for president. This month. Okay. This That's month. true. I will say. I do blame coronavirus for that somewhat because <laughs> yeah, it, that does feel yeah. like a year ago that he dropped out. I will yeah. also say he has it a does. weird beard in it and he's kind of slouching and yeah, wearing like a like hoodie. Gonna get you. It does not look like the Mayor Pete it's that bad. I got used to seeing. It looks like <laughs> a guy that got married to Joe Exotic when he was 19. So <laughs> Slayer Pete. It, it, it was a weird time. Yeah. But yeah, my but brain was like, I know that face, but also I don't have the I like cannot access the information from where I know right. the face from. So we still want to release our beautiful hypothetic ass goodness to you. Um, yeah. So we're here hunkered down in our bunker. Do you have good supplies, Emily, in your bunker at home? Yeah, yeah. I mean, at the moment, I'm sitting next to four Hershey Kisses. Um, but no, I mean... Is that the last bit that you have? No, I'm just trying to like That's ration it. the chocolate that I have. Four per day. Yeah. But no, we have Tanner and I. Tanner uh, is information boy. And so he's he been on this for weeks. Like we started stocking up before. And not like crazy hoarding, but like, oh, let's get a couple extra jars of peanut butter and yeah. a couple extra yeah. things of rice. And so, um, yeah, we're quite good. He actually just went back to Target today to stock up and... And uh, oh. we're good to go for a couple more weeks. So how about you guys? Oh, yeah. Mostly it's just uh, weapons and <laughs> traps. <laughs> traps. Is mostly what we have. Good. Lots of traps, lots of weapons. Uh, cool. Flags. Flags to warn people off of our house. I mm -hmm. told uh, David that, sort of thing. that we need to buy humane traps for the virus. Yeah, it's like, true. I They're sticky. Yeah. No, no, no. Those aren't humane. Those aren't humane. <laughs> Because then right. the, what virus, are the, ones? the virus gets caught in the glue and then it just writhes around and you see it. For the virus. You want the one that kill the virus instantly. You want it to die yeah. right away. It tries to get the little bit of virus cheese and then it gets caught and its neck gets broken. That's how you Do kill you think the virus. It would be better for like the world vaccine is such a you know it's just such a medical word people don't love it it's got a lot of weight <laughs> let's let's put it in the trash vaccine goodbye you've had your time the word trap instead of vaccine better virus trap More virus fun. trap virus trap yeah. yeah virus trap is good mm -hmm. right i mean That's it sounds cool. like a program to put on your computer from <laughs> yeah. 2004 so it's like that but it's for your body Cool. Yeah. Do you like, Your do you body's like a computer. Well, I'm super glad that we are still figuring out how to record this because True. I, like most people, have been 
pretty bummed. Like, this is a bummer. Our world is yeah. really different right now and scary. And there's a lot of uncertainty. People don't know if they're going to have jobs. And uh, the whole health question is also very scary. We're kind of yep. at the beginning of things. Um, and doing this podcast is a great escape for my mind. And I think other people's, I think the people who listen think the same thing unless they're listening to like study up and like i mean at this point I, I don't think we need to worry about it if you're listening you're listening if you're not well come on join us <laughs> <laughs> sure we should mention that we're going to do a live episode oh yeah we are so if you're listening right now mark on your calendar april 9th that's next Thursday, April 9th. We're going to do a, like a Facebook Live. We'll put an invite out on our page. So like our page if you don't like your page right now. And then we'll take live would you rather questions. And then we'll release it as like a regular episode somewhere down the line. But we thought it'd be cool to try to like make an event. Because right now my events calendar, pretty blank. Pretty bare. Unlike my cupboard. I think having things to look forward to is good. Uh, Wednesday... When this episode comes out is uh, April Fool's. What? Do you have any pranks planned? I don't. Well, I don't think Tanner Tanner doesn't like pranks. And oh, what about your baby? My baby. Maybe I should prank her. That could be fun. Yeah, prank her. Get her. Get her young. This is her first April Fool's. I think like the world is a prank to her right now. Like I put a little <laughs> strip of green pepper on her high chair for her in front of her and she picked it up thinking it was a toy and put it in her mouth. And then she looked at me like, what? So like pretty much just everything is a prank for her, I think. That's such a good prank though. If I picked up things that I thought were functional and I put them in my mouth for some reason and then he <laughs> turned into food, that'd be awesome. Yeah. She doesn't get that yet. She'll learn. Yeah. It's tough right now, and uh, so we gotta we gotta do whatever we can to distract ourselves. Well, I think we should get into our ever popular first segment. Would you rather? Ugh. Did you guys come up with some good questions? Not really. No. Well, I really scraped a lot of barrels for this. Basically, he told me that he just <laughs> found all the worst would you rather's yeah. he could find. For a while, I've been googling good would you rather's. And now I've done them all. I've checked them all off. And this is it. I did go to birthdaypartyideasforkids.com to see if they had any yeah. April Fool's themed would you rathers. And they do not. <laughs> shut down. So we're screwed. No, the whole site's we don't shut down. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I guess we'll just do David's crappy would you rathers. Yeah. All right. Are you ready? <laughs> Buckle up. Oh. First, would you rather? Would you rather eat bread or toast? <laughs> Hi, this is uh, Jennifer from the Public Library on Bryant. I'm just giving you a call back. So he came in here every day for a year? He never drank anything, though. The kids around here, well, they, they still haven't stopped talking about it, telling stories making it seem like more than it really was. When was the last time you saw him? I couldn't get the smell out of my clothes. You reporters, I don't know who you think you are digging into the past like this. Are you sure you don't want to look in my basement? I didn't want to look in his basement. I worked on this story for years and I never figured it out. So this is a lost cause. You are wasting your time with this. I've never been able to look at the statue the same way again. I'm sorry, I won't answer any of your questions. No, sir. I was beginning to think I would never find answers. I'm Jacob Townsend, and this is The Bloomfield Incident. Listeners, family, friends, welcome back to another episode of the Bloomfield Incident, on which we are celebrating the 25th anniversary of the Bloomfield Incident. I have for you a couple surprises, 
a couple treasures, developments, one might say developments, I found a lost recording of a town hall meeting from 25 years ago, right after the incident. I'd been looking for this tape for quite some time. I called in a couple favors, I got someone in records to let me in, I made it happen. So I'm going to play some of that for you. I've cut it up because there are things in it that are less than interesting and less than listenable, but I promise there are nuggets, developments. Stay tuned. I also go on a little adventure at the end of this episode in a way that not even I saw coming. And now, the moment that I and you have been waiting for for 25 years. Footage of that town hall meeting right after the incident. The room was stuffy and packed. Sheriff Apple was doing his best to keep things under control. All right, all right. I need everyone to just please calm down. Take your seats. I know there's not enough. We'll try to get a couple fans brought in, but uh, we're doing our best. We're doing our best. Now, I have limited knowledge of the incident at this point, but I will take questions from the audience. I will do my best to answer all your questions to the best of my knowledge. First, I'd like to read this press release, which has been sent to the Bloomfield Examiner to give you a summary of what's happened and what I know so far. Basically, last night, I was alerted to the fact that 32 of our townsfolk had suddenly vanished. We don't know where. We don't know how. Uh, they're all gone. I don't know. They're just gone. And I'm trying my best, and I, I just ask all of you to please keep your, your tempers under control. Yes, uh, yes, you there. What's your question, sir? Was all of that actually in the press release? Yes. Okay. Wow, that was written in a very simulative way. Yeah, I, I, tr- I tried to keep it. They asked me to kind of send them my, my thoughts, and I, I'm not a writer, okay? I'm more of, a, more of a talking guy. I talk. No, I loved it. It was revolutionary. I'll sit down. Next question. Okay, that wasn't a question, but thank you. I guess it was a question, also a comment. I call those quimments. Anyone else have questions? I know this is a weird time. What else are you wondering? You say that you are telling us everything that you know. Well, how can we trust you? Well, Mrs. Rosewater, I've been your sheriff for the last 15 years. I was deputy sheriff. I don't think you tell me everything, though. I can tell you're keeping secrets from me. Mrs. Rosewater, I found your cat. I brought it back to you. I need you to prove to me that you are telling me everything. You want me to prove? How do I do that? Like, would, what would be a good way? I could give you a note that I wrote down and said, I'm telling you the truth. Would that be good? I could sign it. Are you teasing me? Are you making fun of me right here in front of all Emotions my Emotions were high, I need you but Sheriff Apple did his best me to maintain control of the know. situation. Okay. Anyone else? Oh, I didn't see you back there. I'm oh, sorry, sir. It's hard to see you back there. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. <clears throat> hey, my daughter's been missing since last Thursday. She calls me every Thursday. Did she live with you, sir? No, but I'm telling you, she calls me every Thursday. Does she live in Bloomfield? No. Where does she live? Vermont. That's an entirely other state. We're in Michigan. Do you think they're connected? My my friend thinks they're connected. Mr. Crenshaw, I don't know what your friend said, but I do know that I think we would have heard something in the national news if there'd be disappearances in places other than here. Right now, as far as I know, this is limited to just Bloomfield. So I think we're safe. Uh, your, your daughter might just have forgotten your weekly call. I can't control that. I'm sorry. I forgive you. I think I can still make it in time to watch Wheel of Fortune at home. Oh, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of that. Yes. I love it. Do you remember the time they got that seven-letter word? Yes, it's happened multiple occasions, I believe, but, uh... Oh, I almost lost my whole life. 
You almost died. I almost lost my whole life. Okay. As right. you can see, Anything the residents of Bloomfield were concerned and too? confused. Excuse me. Oh, yes. Yes. I have a, I have a theory that this is about a sex cult. Oh, okay. All right. Sex All right. cults. I don't know if you know what they are. I know sex, I've heard of that too. No, that's, that's sex weird. cults. I sex. And I've heard sex of sex cults, cults are a thing where yep. people get together and they hide someplace and they do lots of dirty things, like things that I don't even I didn't even know what they were at first. Uh, I okay. think something was one thing is called like a dosey do. And, okay, uh, Jennifer, Jennifer, uh, Jennifer, Jennifer. Uh, triple kazoo. We, we're all aware. The, Jennifer, the no, kazoo, I'm going to... Can we cut sure, your microphone? Sheriff Apple was visibly uncomfortable. I just, I just but Jennifer, the public librarian, was getting to her question. Here. So you don't have a question? She did have a question. Do you know what a triple kazoo is? We, uh, still don't know. Okay, yes, you, yeah, anybody else. Yes, you, you please. Hey, so, do you have any idea what those raccoons might be? Because that's the one thing that nobody's telling me, and I'm getting freaked out. You're referring to the dead raccoons? What's the deal? Please tell me about the dead raccoons. That is something that I do have some information about. It turns out the, uh... Subway threw away its uh, entire section of cold cut combos, and uh, the raccoons uh, distributed amongst themselves and uh, have all appeared to have perished. Now, I do not like to say this lightly, as Subway is a favorite establishment of mine, and the cold cut combo is a favorite sandwich of mine, but I will not be attending to either one of those things from now on. So, that's what I have to say about that. I am sorry to let you know this way. And I'm sorry to those raccoons. Another question. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, hey, uh, Denny from Subway. Hey, I just wanted to ask, do you think it's okay for me to come up there and tell everyone that we will still be serving the cold cut combo at Subway? Can you you can say it from your seat. You don't need to come anywhere. Everyone can hear you from right there. Okay. Can I ask why what you're gonna do to ensure our safety? We have implemented the most rigorous procedures in protecting our customers from raccoons and cold cut combos. I don't believe there was a danger from raccoons within the subway, but I appreciate you taking those measures. Uh, that's where you're wrong. Oh, the, ra- the raccoons' brethren have taken their revenge upon your establishment? Listeners will be familiar with this conversation as it is heavily featured in my companion podcast, The Takeover. At this point, it's all out war. Do you, are you sure it's not okay for me to come up there and no, say actually, this? No, actually, still we are. We're getting off track, sir. This is not about the raccoons are unrelated. Sheriff Apple uh, was so obviously not, not uh, right a now, talented conversational uh, manager, uh, but he was able to redirect the conversation back to the incident. If anyone has a question about that, I will take it. Otherwise, I think I can catch the last, uh, last round of the wheel before they transition to Jeopardy, which I'm not so good at. Anyone else? Are you telling me that we're just supposed to go home tonight and get in our beds with 32 people just missing from this town and you don't know where they are? The folks in Bloomfield were obviously worked up, as you can tell from that footage. Questions went back and forth. Many of the same topics rehashed again and again as these things go. Questions about the creature... I'm not one for stories, but as a person of the law, could you shed some light on the potential of a cryptid? Mr. Turnbull, I have heard the same reports, although it does seem that no one can agree on what exactly this creature looks like. Aw, gee, mister, I heard it looked like a big, shiny quarter. I heard it's the devil himself. from Greek mythology? A cockatrice? Does anyone know what that is? I heard it was like three dogs. It winked at me. It made a weird sort of whistling sound. It looked just like my dad. I think it's the ghost of Elvis. Ooh, hey creature. How are you? I was like, hey. I believe it guards a gate within the forest the and holds meeting the secrets had obviously to gotten out of Sheriff Apple's hands. Of of As a well-known skeptic, 
he decided to wrap up the meeting before things got too speculative. Um, so I'm just going to ask if anybody has something that they think is maybe related to the incident. Uh, please raise your hand, and in an orderly fashion, we will share those out. I still haven't seen Barbara. And you're looking for my dad? My 2006 Honda Civic has I not returned. I can't set the clock on my VCR. I had a dream about a witch. My shirts are smaller than they the used to be. The planet Venus was slightly lower in orbit than I expected it to be when I observed I've it through my telescope. I've been very gassy. I've been very gassy. The meeting was not exactly what I hoped for. But it was illuminating and inspiring. And it made me realize that there were a couple stones yet left unturned. Listeners, you know that I have explored every possible angle of this case. Aliens? We brought in Martin Hammersmith. Demons? We brought in John Beelzebub Hawkins. And every time, with beyond a shadow of a doubt, not the case, not the case, impossible, couldn't be. We've got one last ditch effort, and I'm sure you remember, Liza Dubois, she and I have been talking. I applied for some grants from various agencies, and I was able to get her at a very high fee to come with me on a visit to the field where the fateful reappearances occurred. Going through this thicket and uh, I think we're almost there, probably just another few minutes. Mm, This is such a lovely walk. It reminds me of my recent sabbatical to the Tahitian Islands. Have you ever been? (laughs) Tell the truth, ma'am. I have. I've never left uh, Michigan. I went up to the UP once on a fishing trip, but I got lost and almost oh, got, sure. almost went up into Canada. Uh, by accident, I went to Canada, but they said I had to come back because I didn't have my passport in order. Well, next October, I am doing a, a guided meditation retreat to Morocco, and I insist you come. Liza had become a different sort of spiritual in the last 25 years. Is that uh, free or cost anything or oh oh it there is a price but can you really put a price on enlightenment i mean you must have an actual money price or you wouldn't be telling me about it i will send you all of the information that sounds real nice i gotta say liza jacob it's really nice to have you all out here liza and the sheriff had been hitting it off back and forth and i couldn't tell if it was camaraderie or desperation. It sounded kind of like one of your narrations there, uh, Jacob. Uh, you know you're still talking in front of us. Jacob, your energy, your energy is so fuzzy and gloomy. The sheriff had been suspicious of me as an investigator no, you, I'm for here. a while. I'm right here. I'm right. You don't have to refer to me in the, what you call third person. Jacob, Jacob, have I pointed you in the direction of my Etsy store? I have crystal bundles that I've started to make up based on your rising sign. And I'm just saying that I think a malachite and then a nice rose quartz will really help open your chakras. I think I had one of my chakras get opened up uh, last week, but I went to, went to the doc and he gave me an ointment for it. So I think I'm okay. Oh, doctors. Yes, yeah, right up here. Okay, see, you see where the branches start to thin out and we got the big open clearing? That's where all 32 of them showed up. The branches started Just, to uh, thin out and it was a know, big yep, open you clearing. Know, we, we, we see it. You don't, you don't need to... Mm, this would be the perfect location for a sound bath. Did either of you bring any brass bowls? Liza had a lot of ideas about what this field may or may not be suitable for, but what I had brought her there to do, along with Sheriff Apple, was a bit of a check, a probe, a sensing, just to put feelers out to see if maybe anything paranormal would arise. I can certainly try, my dear Jacob. I told you before that... I don't find this sort of procedure to be very spiritually satisfying anymore. It is not my preferred method of connection, but you have paid me a lot of money. I gotta say, 
it's just really nice that we can all be out here in nature. Like, don't you think? Like, just hanging out. Just, maybe we, we can go have a beer after this. What do you think, guys? Sheriff, Sheriff Jacob, I, I'm going to need both of you to take a deep cleansing breath. <laughs> Visualize a clean, clear, crystal clear pool of water. And I will go into my trance. The sheriff and I did our best to visualize what Liza had described. And as she sang, we did feel a strange comfort come over us. And then we started to feel something else altogether. A rumbling a shaking. Oh my. Oh. A disturbance. Oh my. Eliza, is this. Oh, oh my. Is this actually happening? Oh Jacob, what's going on? Oh, oh, Jacob, what's going on? Even though those would you rathers weren't that great, I feel like we really got some juice out of them. Yeah. It, the power, it's not in the questions. I think it's in the people. Aww. I do, I do feel like that was uh, extra special. Thanks, David. Thank you. So I think we need to do an, uh, one of our segments we don't do as much anymore. Um, if I were you, it's called, and we talk about things we would do if we were you. We haven't done it as much, but we thought since everyone's stuck at home, we would give you some recommendations of things you could do at home. I like that idea. Let's, let's do it. If I were you, I would do something that is twofold. First... I would download the Chrome or Firefox extension, Netflix Party, and I would use that, which is a communal watching extension. It allows you to sync up viewing of a Netflix thing with your friends, and I'll have a chat in the right of whatever you're viewing. If someone pauses, it pauses for everyone. It's very nice, and it means that you can kind of hang out with your friends and have a movie night. And what I would watch on Netflix currently is the show she and the Princesses of Power. I just finished reading Noelle Stevenson's biography, which was also very good, and that show is incredible. She is the showrunner, and it just feels so triumphant to watch, always. There are four seasons, and they're all great. Bunch of fun ladies doing fun stuff, and I can't get enough. If I were you, and you've exhausted what you feel like is available to you on your streaming services, you should check out another service called Tubi. Have you guys heard of Tubi? Mm-mm. Tubi. Okay. I've heard about it recently. It's spelled T-U-B-I. Tubi. T-U-B-I. And it's Tubi. free. It is. <sighs> I have it on my PS4. It's on Roku. It's on, I think you can get it on pretty much anything. And it's a free streaming service. They have commercials, but they have just a lot of like random movies. And someone recommended it because it actually has like a lot of like really weird cult films that I love, of course. But it has a lot of like mainstream stuff. Um, But if you want to, I would say check that out if you're like, "Uh, I kind of know what's on all this stuff I already have. Tubi has some great stuff. And I will recommend it specifically. There's a movie on there called Burning Bright. It is about a uh, brother and sister who are stuck inside a house with a tiger during a hurricane, <gasps> and they what? try to make sure it doesn't kill them. So if you've been watching that tiger show and you want more tiger content in your life, <laughs> uh, check out this show. Uh, or it's a movie. It's a movie. Actually, really well done. If you're, if you're a fan of creature attack movies or people stuck in a house movies, which are two of my favorite subgenres. Check out that movie. It is on Tubi and I think only on Tubi. They also have the Tales from the Crypt Keeper's Haunted House animated Crypt Keeper show. So it's pretty much all I ever needed in my life. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff on here. We got Wolves starring yep. Jason Momoa. We got <laughs> uh, The Passion of the Christ is on here. I've been looking for that everywhere. The Fog, Degrassi. So David's going to start a separate podcast where he just lists everything on Tubi. <laughs> so you it's can called listen to-, to Be Determined. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it's it's a fun app that's like, it's just free if you're hurting the for stuff to watch. The Bachelor's on here. Yep, there you go. We got Hot Boys. Okay. That's a movie with Snoop Dogg in it. Thanks, David. Emily, Emily, why don't you speak? If I were you, I would listen to one of the many podcasts that has sprung up in the last few days 
as uh, many people realize they are pent up in their house and want to do yeah. something. So why not make a podcast? This one is called Staying In with Kumail and Emily. It oh, is oh, Kumail yeah. Nanjiani and his wife, Emily V. Gordon. I saw it pop up multiple times in my podcast apps. I have multiple. And I was like, oh, mm. I like them. They're both charming and funny. Uh, maybe I'll give it a listen. But for a few days there, I was like, I can't do quarantine content. Like, I'm living yeah. it. I can't listen to people talk about how we're all quarantined and how uh, awful and right. crazy it is. But yesterday I ran out of podcasts. <laughs> and so I started <laughs> listening to it. And um, it is so delightful. And I don't really know how to explain it because it is really just Kamal and Emily talking and they do sort of they're starting to focus it in on like making specific recommendations for things to watch or listen to or do but they're also just really thoughtful humans and listening to them navigate their feelings she used to be a therapist which i did not know before she became a writer so listening to them navigate huh. their feelings and process everything that's going on i found to be weirdly therapeutic um for myself. And instead of feeling like I was just spiraling through anxieties, like I do usually when I'm thinking about what's going on, I felt like I was talking to two funny, smart friends about it. And it made me feel less alone. And I think it's great. I think you should all listen to it. Aww. Staying in with Emily and Camille or Camille and Emily. So we'll take things out. Well, should we do our final segment? David, I think you yeah. picked out a would you rather question. I sure did, bud. You can go ahead with that anytime you're ready. You got it. This segment is called No Questions Asked, where I ask one question and you don't get to ask any of them at all. The question is, would you rather have a golden voice or a silver tongue? Silver tongue. Silver tongue. Golden voice. Hmm. Goodbye. Okay, bye. I'm marching, marching. Cause I'm gonna end. Theme music by Jaden James and the Hunger. Logo by Christian Hagen. Edited by David Gutchy. If you want more of our hypothetical content, join our Facebook group or like our posts on Twitter or Instagram or give us some stars and a review on iTunes or wherever the heck you get your podcasts. I don't even know what a golden voice is. Did you actually look that one up or did you just make it up? No, I looked up best <laughs> would you rather <laughs> You did look it up. All right.